Thanks so much, TJ. I really appreciate that great presentation and thank you for the Azure government team to host this session today. Can you all see my slide? I'm assuming it's fine. Um, let's just get going here. So I, TJ, I think a lot of what you said today really builds on exactly what we're doing at Kazara and our Cyber Torch Managed Security Service. Just a quick snapshot. We're DC based cyber firm focused on FedRAMP, CMMC, Managed Security Operations Center. We're also 8A certified and a GSA hacks in in every category that includes hunting, threat hunting, and incident response and other things related to security monitoring. We got involved with the Azure team, you know, maybe over five years, uh, really focusing on compliance and really started to probe the idea of wouldn't it be great if we could build a cloud based cloud native SIM. And when Azure Sentinel was a, 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 a in private preview and we got early access through that process and we've really been at creating a, a managed security operations center really based on Sentinel. So everything that TJ talked about is going to be really shown in these slides is how do you really operationalize it? And we've been actually living it, uh, you know, creating an advanced security operation capability for, for public, for gov, and really leveraging all of the signals that you can get from the Microsoft 365 Defender ATP suite, from Azure Defender, from MCAS, and from the Defender ATP uh, Defender for endpoint security. And it's been a huge uh, opportunity for us to be able to really leverage these signals across all of these various capabilities that the Microsoft Cloud allows us. So what can we really do with that, right? So one of the really important things for us is we didn't want to spend a lot of time managing infrastructure. We didn't want to spend a lot of time creating connectors and parsers and 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 dealing with deployments and you know things that we've seen with um, other SIM tools. We wanted to have the security analysts focus on what they do best, which is really analyzing the threats, focusing on protection, and we also wanted to solve a compliance issue, which was we really wanted to keep the data in the customer's tenant and wanted to make sure that you know we don't have data really leaving a boundary from an authorization perspective, whether you're looking at FedRAMP, whether you're looking at other authorizations. And, and the one big requirement for us was how do we automate the L1 triage, right? And which is sort of the holy grail if you're running a security operations center is how do we automate a lot of the things that we do in the first instance when we get an incident, how do we look at uh, you know, automating what the geo IP was, what the geolocation was, what other places have we seen this malicious address, what user identity is it tied to? And TJ mentioned a bit about playbooks and automation, and we found that to be sort of limitless with Sentinel and the ability to pull together and query different APIs and 365 and different things like that. And compliance reporting, it becomes a really, really important part of any type of um, continuous monitoring in the federal space, as I'm sure a lot of people on this call probably already know about. And we've built some workbooks, which are dashboards and Sentinel. I'm going to show you all some of those screenshots, which really enable something very fancy. You can actually do cross tenant queries. So if you have a branch office and you want to get an understanding of what the access controls are in that environment, or you want to look at what the SC controls are in another environment, you can go and, and probe those through Sentinel. And the other thing that we, we really think is a, uh, have been a great enabler for us is the ability to extend to AWS, GCP, and on-prem. So what's really driving this engine is all of the Sentinel things that we've been talking about on this call, but it's really all of the other ecosystem if you're a cloud native. Even if you're not cloud native, it's all of the other capabilities that we're able to extend through what's Microsoft Defender, all of the XDR capabilities. So managing email and ATP threats and malware threats and all of the phishing threats to endpoints with Microsoft 365 Defender and um, making sure that we're, we're watching detonations on endpoints and have the ability to, to monitor those endpoints and then also look at identities, whether it's in the 365 and also in Azure 
uh, with Azure AD and be able to go across this uh, environment from a customer's perspective and then integrate all of that. And, and really be able to look at it from a single pane of glass, which often is a misused uh, way to describe things. But we've been really impressed in being able to, to really leverage that across our customers and various tenants. So how do we really do this and how do we really make the most of the Microsoft Cloud? So what we have done is really built a cloud native architecture leveraging Sentinel, but also Lighthouse, since we're an MSSP running on Azure, we really wanted to make sure that we're able to look at different tenants, look at their workspaces, and, and do that in a mechanism that provides us the most limited role-based access. We don't necessarily want access into a entire subscription. We don't necessarily want access to everything that uh, a customer might be doing from a different resource perspective. So we've created some, some really interesting automation, which really allows us to get a very limited access just to be able to connect our Lighthouse tenant into a customer's Sentinel environment, which, which I'll walk you all through in a separate architecture slide that I have here. The other thing is really automating, and automating and automation is a huge part of the initial triage and the ticket enrichment process. When our analysts receive the ticket, we really want to make sure that we have the most information related to that user or to that threat, and not just from a severity perspective, from a location perspective, from the ability to understand what this, is there a vulnerability associated with the asset? What have we seen in the past? Is there any historical uh, data that could be useful to an analyst? And a lot of that is really driven by logic apps and playbooks. And we feel that there's been a ton of improvement in the Sentinel stack in the last year or so, really driving to that um, capability. The other big part is collecting information from connectors or data sources that are not Microsoft. So think like a firewall like Fortinet or a Cisco ASA. And, and a lot of those signals are sometimes hard to extract but it's been it's it's supported natively up with Microsoft with either Syslog or Ceph format, and we've developed a disastic hardened virtual appliance for Syslog collection, and and you know a lot of that Syslog collection can occur in a very locked down uh, uh, virtual appliance that can just send the data back to Sentinel in the same workspace as a customer. You can actually do some really fancy tagging and labeling. There's also uh, often a request for saying, well, we don't have a connector that's supported uh, today by Sentinel. Can we create a connector? And you can create custom connectors and you may have to write some parsers for that data, but a lot of that automation and, and creating those connectors are very much supported um, within the Sentinel stack. The other thing that we, that we did, and, and we're really happy to showcase some of that to you all today, is is the actual workbooks uh, that Sentinel uh, has. So Sentinel comes with some workbooks that allow you to look at it, a snapshot, you know, what's going on with users, where's their risky sign-ins. Uh, you can create custom queries for users' uh, data or, you know, asset data. But then one of the things that we really wanted to do was for CMMC, you know, level three, for FedRAMP high, how do we create a set of queries that correspond to those controls, right? So how do we make sure that we're actually going to meet those control requirements? And how are we going to do that at not just this tenant's perspective, but what if we have five different workspaces? Can we run a, a cross workspace query, a cross tenant query to really, really figure out? And the other thing was about ticketing portals that was touched on the, on the session before this previously. There is a lot of integration that we found was super helpful for us, whether it was for Zendesk, ServiceNow, PagerDuty, and connecting to things that really allow us to build our architecture, which at a very high level is really divided into two parts from our perspective. It's super critical for us for customer data to the extent that it's possible to reside within the customer's tenant. And you can easily do that today by you know if you're on azure if you are a hybrid if you are a on-prem plus azure you can send data to your log analytics workspace and that data is going to be inside of your boundary so if you're doing a native m365 or azure connector 
uh, you know, that's fairly easy. Couple of clicks. There are some additional configurations that are required because not every type of data other than alert data is coming to Sentinel. So there's some additional configuration that needs to happen. And with non Azure cloud, there's a, a, a tremendous amount of ability with Azure Arc and Azure Defender to be able to reach multi cloud and be able to extract signals from those clouds back into Sentinel. And on the right hand side, you see here that syslog, uh, you know, whether it's firewalls, web proxies, VPNs, you know, that all is very uh, straightforward to collect. Um, as long as the actual data source is able to produce the facilities and produce the data that we need. Once the data is collected, all of this is really the customer ecosystem of data sources. And, you know, most customers that are sophisticated are not just going to be a cloud native only. They're going to have a data center. They might have a branch office. They might have a, 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 a team working remotely that they want to monitor. There's uh, due diligence rooms. And from a cyber torch perspective, we really focus on bringing those those signals staying in the customer environment and then us making API calls into that customer environment through a series of alerting, uh, you know, vulnerability management stuff that's running within Azure Defender and then really being able to leverage Sentinel that I talked about in the previous slide. So how do we uh, really look at all of the various compliance perspectives? So one of the things that we do at at, at Kuzara CyberTorch a lot is to talk about various compliance regimens. And what you see on the screen here is just an example uh, because there are a lot of different controls and I'm going to get into them a bit more. But almost every control framework, whether it's FedRAMP, moderate, FedRAMP high, 800-171, the CMMC level three, which is the 800-171 plus the additional 20 practices, all of them are going to have some degree of security monitoring, right? And they're all going to have vulnerability management and some of those controls are on the screen and that includes things like the ability to do dynamic scans, the ability to do static scans, you know, which you can do and you can ingest those signals into Sentinel as well. So one of the our favorite things is being able to say we have a, a machine that we're seeing a, a, a potential threat on and let's go back and look at when was the last time the machine was scanned and fusing those data points together. If you look at CMMC, there's actually in CMMC level five, which is an evolving standard. We'll hear more about level five and uh, level four and five next year. There's actually a requirement for a 24 by seven cyber incident response team. And there's requirements for threat intelligence into the SDLC. So there's some unique requirements that are really hyper focused on security monitoring. And when you start looking at the flow of data and the flow of CUI and the flow of regulated data, one of the things you really have to, to, to figure out early is how am I going to do this and what SIM am I going to use? So Azure Sentinel already has a designation running on FedRAMP High, whether it's an Azure Gov, whether it's an, 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 an commercial, and we're leveraging all of those features from a stack perspective that are already part of that, whether it's Log Analytics, whether it's Azure Lighthouse, and so it really helps customers inherit those capabilities to be able to do the things that you see on the screen. So compliance um, is a big part of why actually customers really want to go down this path because they can meet the compliance requirements, but they can also do good security hygiene and be able to monitor those things as well. So we often break it down into what are you going to be doing a security monitoring coverage with us or are you also going to be doing um, you know, uh, requirements for vulnerability management. I know the slides are probably a bit hard to see. Uh, there's, a, just to kind of read out, there's 47 security monitoring requirements in FedRAMP moderate, which is quite a bit. There's 325 controls, but there's 47 of them by some interpretation of technical and or a process, right? So if you're using Sentinel, to find out a security monitoring issue, that doesn't really cover you for incident response. You can use Sentinel for incident response, but there's quite a few processes that tag along with all the technology stuff. So there's, in our interpretation, there's 47 security monitoring requirements spread out in a, in a wide variety of the 17 control families or 17 domains, if you're talking CMMC, and there's 13 specific controls that deal with 
with scanning. So things like RA5, which talk about scans, and then what is the process for identifying, resolving scans for high, moderates, and lows within a certain prescribed period. If you're doing FedRAMP high, it's 65 security monitoring requirements. And then, you know, the number of vulnerability processes goes up slightly to about 17. Regardless of the numbers, what's really important is how do you do these bond scans and security monitoring from a single platform where you're able to basically bring those signals back and fuse them together. And that is the holy grail of trying to understand risk because there's often assets that haven't been patched that are really the targets of the bad actors or bad actors are inside your environment and trying to traverse looking for things that might be uh, vulnerable, right? And so we often look at this from a scoring perspective. There's some really uh, interesting um, capabilities related to um, analytics and user behavior that I'll walk you all through. Just focusing on one specific set of controls, if you look on the left-hand side here for FedRAMP, the access control family has at least four controls and enhancements that deal with some aspect of monitoring information system accounts, monitoring privileged role assignments, and monitoring usage, atypical usage, monitoring usage for remote access methods. Now, each one of these specific requirements is in some way met with Sentinel very easily because you're actually, based on your data source, you can actually ingest data from VPNs if that's your remote access method, or you could ingest data from a bastion host in Azure government, or you can ingest data from a WAF if you're looking at it from a web application perspective, or you could get data from Azure AD and really bring all of that raw data into a set of signals, threat indicators, behavior profiling, and, and really trying to understand all of this data for one single purpose, to get insight. And that insight really enables us to be able to react and then obviously fulfill the compliance requirement. So a customer wants to meet these compliance requirements, they're subscribing to the platform, they're trying to figure out how do we actually meet these requirements and we're providing them the indicators to meet these requirements. A very interesting use case that was that is very relevant to us that was actually exposed in the Ignite conversation is really very relevant for AC2. For those of you who really understand the 853 control set, there's actually a requirement for monitoring access and monitoring uh, you know, various different controls and the usage of how accounts are used. So one of our interesting use cases is how do we monitor, the, how do we meet this control? Just one example here is if you see here, you've got a user, Claire, she's logging in with a familiar device, with a familiar IP, she's going to a trusted application, whether that application is pre-boarded in MCAS or some other tool, we have a, a designation and we feel good about that. But also from an Azure AD perspective and some of the signals that we get from Endpoint, we can see that it's fairly normal for Claire to do her regular thing. She logs in from an iPhone 8, no issues. She logs in from her Windows machine, that's fine, not an issue. There's her standard applications, there's standard IP addresses, and then she's usually logging in from the United States. We're okay. When Claire starts to log in at two o'clock in the morning, and she's on a Linux machine, and she's coming in on a strange application that she's never been on before, and she's actually getting in from an IP address that's already associated with a malicious IP, and then it's from a country that she's normally not logging in from, we have a problem. And you can configure these policies in other places in the Microsoft Cloud, which then we bring those alerts into Sentinel. So if you're just running Sentinel, on sort of you know the vanilla out of the box you may or may not see these types of activities so there is some configuration which is which is done and some think of it as a disastic for azure ad or disastic for mcas and you go through that process of hardening creating the right policies creating the right signals the alerts to really bring it in into this platform in the way that you see here so we're able to meet those controls that we just talked about. How do we monitor information system accounts? How do we monitor privileged accounts? How do we know atypical usage? 
So AC212 monitoring information system accounts for atypical usage. This is a prime example of that. A couple of things I want to quickly cover. I have a few minutes left on this presentation, but happy to take questions after. One of the really, really, really powerful things in Site Sentinel is the ability to create workbooks, the ability to create dashboards. So you see here, we've created a CMMC specific workbook. There's 17 domains in CMMC. They're going to look very familiar to 800 and 171 because that's what's the overriding uh, common framework for them, right? And you'll see here, we've created drop downs for access, system integrity, risk management, and some response. You get the idea. What happens then is then you create the right data sources to get the data from the environment that you're monitoring. And we work with customers to say, hey, AC2041 requires actions for individual systems to be traced. We've built some queries for that. We need AC3045, that's the auditing control family that actually requires log sources. And so you, you can get those and then you see the dashboards start filling up. The great thing about this is if you notice here on the top, I'm looking at a customer environment now or sandbox environment in the screenshot. I can hit a drop down and go to a customer number five and I can see them. You can do that for all of your branch offices. You can go to different things and at a snapshot be able to say, hey, we've got a problem in this tenant or across this workspace. A couple of other screenshots here that you can see, like for example, there's a control for IR2097. It's a, it's a CMMC practice that talks about doing a root cause analysis on incidents. You can do a root cause analysis, not just from the signals that you've been able to send to Sen Sentinel, but all of the other stuff that you're able to bring in front of the first slides that I had whether it's Azure Security Center, whether it's a rare Azure resource deployment, whether it's a 365 phishing attack, all of those signals can come into Sentinel and they can be prioritized based on severity, which you can control based on the asset weights you can do. And then there's other things like employing the principle of leash privilege, correcting deficiencies. And this one is very uh, important because it deals with vulnerabilities and things like that. So, Every CMMC practice, and of course we have the same thing for FedRAM high, FedRAM moderate, is fed into Sentinel in a series of workbooks that are populating and are deployed for that customer, which then brings everything together. So that's the end of my presentation. I'll be able to take some um, more uh, you know, questions uh, either during this meeting or after. It's back over to you, Karina.